I believe we're headed into the most significant reset moment for AI since 2022 when ChatGPT launched. Why is that? Because for the first time, we are about to see a new state-of-the-art model that has nothing to do with OpenAI. That's Gemini 3, and it's going to change everything. I want to give you the strategic implications of that shift today, and I want to lay out for you the implications that you are going to see as a consumer, as an AI enthusiast, as a builder, as an engineer, and as an executive. I want you to think about this as a holistic shift in the landscape because I believe it's going to be. The first thing we're going to talk about is the axes that matter in the board game ahead because I think that these are not widely understood. Number one, frontier capability is one of the five axes that matter. Raw reasoning, how it does on benchmarks. We're actually pretty familiar with this one. I'm not gonna take a lot of time on it. The key thing to remember is that for a long time now, OpenAI and Google and Anthropic have all been neck and neck around the top of the leaderboards and Chinese open source models have been competing and just behind. Number two is distribution and who gets to have default status. Who owns the default surface for billions of users? Google has that on Android with Gemini integrated throughout. It's one reason why, and many people don't know this, there are half a billion Gemini users. Apple has this, but doesn't have any OS that actually is intelligent. And so ChatGPT is functioning as Apple's default right now because that is the primary app that iPhone users are using. That's more vulnerable than you would think. Microsoft has a stranglehold via Copilot on a lot of the Windows-driven office experience. And Anthropic is almost always in apps that you choose, not defaults. And that's going to come back. The third axis is capital and compute posture. So OpenAI has a between a $12 and $20 billion revenue trajectory, but it's burning eight to $9 billion a year and projected another $115 billion of spend through 2029 with profitability not expected until 2030. Google and Apple, you can effectively thinking of them as having infinite cash for our purposes. From their core businesses, they're spinning off so much cash that AI is a line item. It is not an existential bet for them. I know that sounds crazy, but it is true for them both. Anthropic, it's at 5 billion ARR in mid-2025, and it's scaling extremely rapidly. It will probably be valued at over $300 billion at its next raise. The capital question is not can they raise, it is can they sustain frontier scale model burn and keep unit economics somewhat sane for enterprise. Axis number four, enterprise, penetration, and trust. So Anthropic has over 300,000 businesses now. 80% of their revenue is from enterprise, and they have a very strong safety first brand that's helping them. OpenAI has massive usage High ARR overall, but is also kind of the poster child for regulatory scrutiny, for the AGI risk and doom narratives. It has some brand issues. Google is a trusted infrastructure vendor for cloud already and has a long history of killing products and moving slowly, which is not helping it in this situation. Apple maxes out the consumer trust access, but has minimal existing enterprise AI footprint and frankly, minimal existing consumer AI footprint. The fifth axis around which everything moves is control of the UX layer. Whoever owns what you talk to wins a whole lot more than whoever owns the model. So Apple is trying to do this with Siri, but that's been a disaster. Amazon tried to come in and make a play for that with their in-home assistants. That's been a disaster. Google is trying this with Android Voice. OpenAI has ChatGPT as a voice, but the voice model has not necessarily kept up with the pace of 5.1 and the march of the models that are uh, producing written text. Anthropic has web and API only, and you can kind of compare it to having a strong brain, but it doesn't have a lot of voice integration. The reset moment is that all five axes are about to move at once instead of one at a time, which is what we've been seeing. Let's look at where the players sit on the board before we contemplate how the ball is about to spin. Google and Gemini, from laggard to OEM intelligence. So their position now is at the frontier. Gemini 2.5 Pro is Google's top model. The company calls it the most powerful AI model today. You can make that claim, but whatever, it's, it's in there. Uh, it has a lot of breadth. It has strong distribution, Android, Chrome, Workspace, et cetera. What changes with Gemini 3? If we assume, and it is an assumption because it's not out yet, but if we assume that Gemini 3 is a clearly accepted 
big step change, state-of-the-art model. It is clearly better than everything out there today on all accepted benchmarks and a bunch of new ones. And if we assume it is integrated by default into Android and iOS via Apple licensing, because Apple just cut a really big deal with Google, now we're in a different game. Because Google now shifts from being a third contender in a race to the AI Intel inside for the world's two largest mobile platforms at once. Now, there are risks here, there are constraints here. If Apple wraps Gemini in its own UX and Apple wraps it in its privacy guarantees and Apple nerfs the model, Google risks being seen as just an engine, Google risks their brand, and it may not happen very fast. Also, Google is historically slow at sort of productionalizing these research models. And so it may be that we get Gemini 3 and it is incredibly good, but the distribution is not great. And OpenAI is able to steal a march and keep their distribution advantage with the consumer. So where is Apple? Apple's opportunity is really to move from AI laggard to potential leapfrog. Apple's in-house models trail behind everybody else on metrics, obviously, but they're finalizing a deal to license a really big Gemini model for Siri and Use that to power an Apple intelligence revamp. The cost is reported to be around a billion dollars a year. The plan would be to run a custom Gemini-based model on Apple-controlled cloud, keep the privacy narrative intact, and use it to power a huge AI reboot for the company. That would enable Apple to get frontier-grade intelligence without eating the full capital expenditure of training frontier models. And they can afford the cash, right? So they retain the OS integration, they retain all of the identity and the payment rails, they retain all of the hardware margins, and the your data stays on your device story. If Gemini keeps pace or wins on quality, and if Apple can pull that intelligence in at a steady pace and refresh the experience so it stays cutting edge, Apple could leapfrog OpenAI on consumer UX, which none of us saw coming. Now, the risk is pretty simple. They're dependent on Google's roadmap. Any safety issues with Gemini become Apple's risk. Enterprise AI continues to be largely untouched by any of this. This is a consumer and ecosystem mode. It is not a cloud play. Meanwhile, if we go to OpenAI's side of the chessboard, they have very strong models. Chat GPT-5 is extremely strong on most benchmarks. It is the default mental model for AI for hundreds of millions of people. They've raised 40 billion-ish in capital. I keep turning around, they raise more billion, so who knows where they're at now. Their projected 2025 revenue is somewhere between 12 and $20 billion, give or take and they're burning cash. Actively, they are trying to translate their cash into a cutting edge frontier model position. So OpenAI effectively bought Johnny Ive's hardware startup to build a screenless AI device of some sort. That venture has reportedly hit technical and legal snags. A court has ordered them to pause marketing under the IO brand, fundamental UX issues around how the device speaks and on device. There's leaks coming out of that team basically saying it's very difficult. Net, net, they're not shipping hardware yet. So now you're in a situation where you bought this device to help you to secure your advantage through this cash burn period, but it's just a lot of capital expenditure. There's all high uncertainty on the form factor. You haven't gotten to results yet. So to ladder it up, OpenAI is simultaneously a frontier model lab, a consumer app, and an infrastructure provider. They are in a go big or go die position. They need to either get to monopoly level pricing power, which given the extreme proliferation of AI is unlikely, or they have to go to extreme scale and multiple massive distribution partners, maybe Microsoft, maybe Apple, OEMs, whatever. That's the only way they get to scale. Meanwhile, Anthropic, quietly attacking the enterprise jugular. They have scaled their revenue super fast. They're on track for, call it nine-ish billion dollars by the end of this year, 20 to 26 billion next year. Their valuation keeps exploding and their base is 300,000 plus business customers with largest accounts into six figures. So product stack, Claude models are very strong. They're near state of the art. They're efficient. They're safe. The ecosystem is very strong thanks to the model context protocol adoption. Now, thanks to Claude skills. Uh, Claude code is very popular with developers. Almost all their revenue is enterprise, unlike anyone else in this position. Distribution is via platform enterprises already use AWS, Google Cloud, Direct API, SaaS integrations. They have a very strong alignment first narrative, which helps with enterprise focused on safety and they have economics that look much more disciplined than OpenAI's. Anthropic is essentially saying, let OpenAI and Google fight over consumer. We will own the budget lines at the Fortune 500. It might work. So here's what changes if Gemini 3 and Apple actually come together. We will move 
from a model arms race to a distribution duopoly on mobile. So instead of seeing a massive arms race across the whole spectrum, we will suddenly be in a world where Google powers the iOS experience by default, Google powers the Android experience by default, and Google wins just about no matter what. We will also move from a world where we ask who has the best model all the time because they're slow, tightly competitive, to a world where we ask who has the best UX and who has the best data loops. Because increasingly, as models continue to get more effective, we're not going to be asking ourselves, is the model smart enough to do it? We're gonna be asking, is the UX easy enough for me to use? And is the data loop in place where I can get the data I need safely? A dumber model with better access to data is better today than any other model out there. It's also true that if the UX is terrible, you don't get the distribution. And that is actually the primary issue right now with Gemini is that Gemini's UX is not on par with where Claude and where OpenAI are. Gemini continues to be treated a little bit like a research project from Google, and that is the historic risk of Google product thinking. I don't wanna lose the narrative here either. If Gemini 3 is the clear state of the art, Apple can credibly say, we pick the best model, that makes it not a defensive choice anymore. Google will gain leverage versus AWS and Microsoft when they sell cloud AI because they can point to consumer dominance and they can point to state-of-the-art benchmarks and say they have the best. Open AI will lose some of their halo as the default synonym for AI unless they can deliver a model that beats. And this delivers a reset moment where the crown of best model and the crown of default assistant at once moves from Open AI Microsoft to Google slash Apple at least in consumer life. Now, if you layer in OpenAI's current trajectory and you look at their cash burn, this suddenly begins to matter strategically. Because if you're not obviously winning on distribution, spending tens of billions of dollars to stay at the frontier is going to be less defensible. OpenAI has a strategic imperative to continue to win at distribution. And there is a real chance with the Gemini 3 moment that they will lose that edge. So what does this look like over the next couple of years? If we fast forward, let's say Gemini 3 comes out, it's what we say, Apple is able to move quickly. These are assumptions, they might not come true. But if they do, and they're reasonable, then we have scenario A, Gemini is just everywhere, it's Google's winning all the way, Gemini 3 is the clear state of the art, and then whatever comes after it, Apple's able to ship with the real brains of Gemini inside it, Anthropic eats enterprise share, and OpenAI remains a strong player on web and app, but loses default AI narrative and probably loses ground on enterprise and probably has some issues with fundraising down the road. Scenario B is a device reset. If OpenAI is able to ship a compelling AI native device, they could win the personal AI hardware subscription battle, harvest a ton of cash flow, and reset the bar for who is able to access AI as default and who is two hops away. Because if you can ship an AI native device and it becomes the place where all of your voice is captured, now you're in a position to control the market. Scenario C is enterprise carve up and consumer chaos. The consumer space may continue to remain noisy with iOS having multiple players, Android having Gemini, multiple assistants, competing apps, et cetera. Enterprise buyers may consolidate on just Anthropic and maybe OpenAI and maybe Google and just pick between them, which is a little bit like what I see today and that might continue. If that happens, the winner is probably Anthropic because they thrive in a multi-model scenario. And the losers would be single model SaaS vendors who have thin modes because this kind of carve up requires intense competition and thin moat SaaS vendors are vulnerable. So what are the strategic implications here? Number one, stop treating your best model as your core bet. Assume that you need to swap models. I've said this before, I'm serious. Number two, optimize for surfaces. Don't just optimize for model IQ. Ask, where does my user's intent originate? And then ask, how can I build an opinionated workflow against that surface where they are, against the voice, against the Slack, against the email? Not a generic chat bot. If Apple and Gemini become the default assistant, you'll want to design flows where you have that hot handoff from Siri or from Gemini into your app for specialized tasks. Number three, st start to treat Anthropic as the enterprise benchmark. Like take it seriously. The way they invest in safety, the way they invest in governance is something that I think sets expectations for a lot of production workloads. Number four, keep an eye on OpenAI's burn rate and keep an eye on the regulation and safety narrative at OpenAI. There are risks there. What can you expect to see changing depending on your role? If you're an individual, and I'll move up to executive from there. If you're an individual, you should expect your day-to-day -day tools will become more opinionated and more embedded. The idea of the best model is gonna matter less to you than how you can orchestrate your tools around your work. 
and the half-life of specific tool skills is going to keep dropping. The half-life of judgment and the ability to design workflows is going to be very persistent. So optimize for how to think with AI, not a particular model. You want to treat your assistants like interchangeable contractors, and you want to become the person who can translate what leadership wants into what this stack of tools can do. If you're in the builder space, if you're a founder or a PM or a producty person, you cannot bet on a single model vendor or a worthy assistant app as a strategy. Instead, you need to architect for model volatility. You need to pick a surface and obsess over owning it. Maybe it's spreadsheets, maybe it's email, maybe it's the terminal, maybe it's the calendar, just own that. And then you need to differentiate on your workflow and on your proprietary data. So you have to have hard one process knowledge plus proprietary data or labels that are measurably better and then deliver into a domain-specific UX that really adds value. Finally, financial discipline around AI usage is gonna matter. You as a builder will have to make sure that usage can explode without token costs exploding. Your edge is going to be owning a specific workflow on a specific surface with a multi-model backend and a believable margin story. That's basically the, the big story you're gonna have. If you're an engineer, the frontier model itself is less of a moat and how you use it is more of a moat. The stack is just going to get more complicated, so you need to start to learn to specialize in orchestration, to specialize in systems, not just in prompting. You need to design for tool and provider churn when you're thinking about your career and your systems. And you need to get really, really good at balancing cost, at balancing latency, and at balancing quality. Being able to show executives we can cut 60% cost with 5% quality loss is gonna be a big deal. And better or worse, security and data boundaries are part of your job now. You have to understand to things like tenant isolation, PII flows. You need to expect customers to ask about this and about which providers see their data and under what terms. If you're an engineer, your edge is going to be turning unstable models into stable systems that the business can bet on. If you're in, you know, C-suite executive, if you own outcomes, budgets, or teams, you are responsible for results, but you cannot pick the winner. You cannot pick a model. You have to adopt a portfolio vendor strategy. You need to plan on multiple primary model partners. You need to decide explicitly where you lean on OS defaults versus where you build your own. So if it's generic productivity, maybe the OS is okay. If it's core workflows for your business, maybe you invest in your own orchestration. But that line has to be an explicit choice. You need to start to frame AI as a workflow transformation, not software. I keep emphasizing this, but when you approve an AI initiative, the question is which workflow are we replatforming? What metrics will move? People can't answer that. If they can't talk about the workflow, they shouldn't be partners with you on that build. Governance and safety is gonna be a bigger and bigger deal. We saw, saw the Anthropic hack this week. We need to have inventories of where models are used, policies on data residency, all of the stuff that goes with risk management also is going to become a sales enabler for you because other companies are gonna take this serious too. On the talent side, you're gonna to need to be looking for AI native operators, not just prompt people. So the most valuable hires can map your PL and ops to AI workflows, start to prioritize those by impact, and then work with technical teams to get them live. Titles are gonna vary, but that's the capability that you're gonna to wanna to find. Last but not least, you have to be disciplined with your capital allocation. Do not fund in-house model training, please, unless you have very clear reasons. Default to renting the intelligence and owning the data, the workflows, and the customers. Ultimately, your edge is going to be turning AI from scattered experiments into a coherent portfolio of bets that you can actually measure ROI against. This is what I wanna leave you with. The strategic insight that we are on the verge of another reset I think is stable even if the Gemini 3 and Apple story only becomes partially true. If Gemini 3 is a state-of-the-art model, but maybe not 20% better, maybe only 10% better, this could still happen. If Gemini 3 is embedded into Apple, but it takes six months instead of three months, this could still happen. The reason why is driven more by the strategic position of the players on the board, where Anthropic is, where OpenAI is, where Google is, than it is by the exact timing of individual model releases. And that's what I think makes this a durable thesis. And I think it's worth paying attention to because we have not had a shakeup like this. We have not had a moment when OpenAI lost the crown and we're about to find out what that looks like. So get ready. The AI race is only heating up. I hope that this gives you a sense of where the market and where the AI space is going in general and what you can do to take advantage. Cheers.